All right, welcome back to week two of crafting for Valentine's Day. I am really looking forward to this little series of crafts. I have quite the lineup today and I know you're going to love it just as much as I have loved to bring it all together. So if you did miss week one, go ahead and rewind and watch that one and then come back and watch this. You can watch them in any order really, but don't miss that first video because that was a lot of fun to put together and so many of you really loved those crafts. So I'm really excited about that. Now, one thing I wanted to note about this video is I'm gonna be working on some Valentine's Day crafts once more, but I'm also going to be working on some Valentine's Day gift baskets for my kiddos. And at the very end of the video, you're going to see how that all comes together, but I'll be working on a variety of little things to put in those baskets as well. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make a little shirt but I am going to be using two different iron-ons. I'm gonna be using a pattern iron-on and a more solid iron-on. So I'm gonna be doing both pieces for the shirt to make it very nice and colorful. And when I am using multiple pieces of iron-on or multiple styles of iron-on, what I want to do is I want to look up the heat settings for both, and I wanna see which one takes a higher heat temp. So for this pattern iron-on, it actually requires a heat temperature of 340 degrees and it's actually going to be for 30 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and program my heat press so that it matches the heat settings for the pattern iron on. And then I know that this one takes less heat. This is around 305 degrees or 315 degrees. So I want to heat my higher one first and then I'll layer on the product that takes less heat second, okay? So now what I'm going to do is while that is heating, I'm going to take my weeding tool and I will go ahead and prep my designs. Now, as always, I will link all of the things that I am using to bring these crafts together. You'll find those by clicking on the title of the video. And once you do that, a description box will pop open and then you'll see a big list of all of the things that I am using. That way, if you see something that you're either wanting to add to your craft room or you're simply just curious about, then you can go ahead and check that out. Okay, so I think that is actually it. I'm gonna make sure though. Oh, no, 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 it sure isn't. Okay, we just have some decorative pieces here. So we have tiny little like crescent moon pieces that make make a little shine factor, I guess, on these cute little letters. So I'll go through and just get those all weeded out really quickly. Okay, I think I have everything all weeded out here. Okay, so right now, so far we have fries and guys, <laughs> right? It's gonna be so cute. Such a fun little design. Now with pattern iron on, I always struggle to actually find and see where I need to weed. It's just trickier for me, but always worth it in the end. And I've, I've tried the bright pad. Honestly, I brought it out once or twice. Um, and I know it works for many people, but for me, it just, I don't know, it really wasn't worth it for me. So I know a lot of people love it and that's wonderful, but I guess we all just work in different ways, right? Okay, I'm gonna go through and get all of the middles of the little hearts. How's everybody doing on crafting for Valentine's Day? Let me know if you do craft for Valentine's Day. I'm also doing a lot of card making videos for Valentine's Day as well. And even if you don't make cards or even if you aren't one that wants to become a card maker, sometimes those videos are just so relaxing to watch. I cannot tell you how many channels I watch and I don't actually you know, want to do the type of crafting that they're doing. However, I just love watching things come together, right? It's just so fun. So even if you don't enjoy certain, um, or you don't have an interest in certain things, sometimes it's just really fun and relaxing to watch certain pieces being created and just seeing creativity. But if you do like making cards, I do have a lot of Valentine's Day inspiration that's coming up and that's already up and that I did last year too. Okay, so I got the second layer all done. And as you can see, this is going to say fries before guys, isn't that adorable? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, just for placement purposes, I'm going to place this all together and I'm just going to put the liner on top of the liner. So just like, <laughs> taking my time here, 
just like I think that, okay? So I will not press it like this, but I want to have one piece so that when I go to put it on my shirt, I can get a proper placement because I know how wide it truly is going to be. If I just took the pink layer first, then I wouldn't have, I get close, right? Because the pink does span over, let me get, oh, let me get something under there. That's doing you nothing, is it? Okay, there you go. If I just did the pink layer, I'd get pretty close because the pink does span most of the design here, but I wouldn't get just perfect. Not that we need to be perfect, but I wouldn't get as great as if I would just put them together and get an idea for where the whole design needs to be, right? Okay, so I'm gonna move this for a second because I wanna prep my surface. And again, my heat press is set initially for my pattern iron-on. And that is why I placed that one down first. Okay, if you noticed, I put this little um, teal, I think the color's called sage, I put that down on top so that you'll see in a moment when I get it positioned, I can leave the pattern one there and peel this one up. Okay, before that though, lots of lots of, oh, if you heard that, I'm so sorry. I have a huge bag of peanut, these are my favorite, peanut butter, not peanut, peanut butter M&Ms, and there's a story to that. I will share, I'll share why I am binging on peanut butter M&Ms in just a minute. It's a fun story, it's a stressful story, but we'll get there. Okay, so here we go. Let's grab the design, right? Both layers. And if you note, pattern iron-on, most pattern iron-on, at least this brand, it doesn't have a sticky carrier, okay? So the, red, the other one, as you saw, when I put that down, it has a very sticky carrier sheet, it's like tape. So when I place this one down, it sticks, whereas my pattern iron on, it doesn't at all. So just know that if you need to place it and add some heat tape, go ahead and do that. That's a great idea. That way you don't nudge it. I think I can peel that off without, without um, moving it around. So I think we'll be okay. But just make sure if you do need an adhesive that you, does that look good? I think so. That you, um, use a heat safe tape, okay? You don't want to accidentally melt anything. Now, as you can see, there was a little piece there and got that off. Okay, so I do have my press all ready to go for pattern iron on, and I preheated my shirt. I also did a little lint roll to make sure there's nothing on my shirt. So now I can do 340 for 30 seconds and lay that first layer down. Okay, so here's the story on the peanut butter M&Ms. My third and final baby, he's a boy, he is about two and a half, has shown no interest in potty training, which is completely fine. I've been waiting for him to show me he's ready. Well, the hubby is traveling and all of a sudden he has decided not only to crawl out of his crib, this is new, my girls never did this, crawl out of his crib this week. Again, hubby is out of town but he also has decided that he is adamant about wanting to learn to potty train. And it, it, a timing is just, it's just hilarious, right? Because if any of you have potty trained, you know that it's, it's not the smoothest of processes. It takes a little planning, it takes a little stress, and it takes a little chocolate, both for the one who's learning to potty as a little prize and both for the mom who is silently just, <laughs> eating all the chocolate in the background to get through the process. But I have to tell you so far, I've been dreading it because I've heard, now I've heard, this is not necessarily you know set in stone, but I've kind of heard that boys are more difficult to potty train. I am learning he is my easiest child so far. He just does it, he's doing so good. I, I can't believe this. And it's a testament to you know waiting for your children to be ready to potty train because when they're ready, then they just do it. So <laughs> it's been awesome. However, I have chocolate in my house now and my son and I are equally enjoying the little sweet treats as we 
as we go through this little process together. Okay, so that initial one came off and I have that layer here. There was a little bit of um, coming, like tugging up on some of the pieces, but I'm not worried about that because I am going to be doing another layer that's going to require some heat. So those pieces are going to automatically remedy themselves anyway. Now, before I do anything else, I need to bring my heat press back in and I need to cool this off. So I'm gonna do, let's do three, I think it's 305. I think it's 305. And then for this one's for like 15 seconds. So let's let that really cool down. And in the meantime, I will get this placed on here. Now, as you can see, that is so cute. As you can see, I have a lot of exposed iron on here. So you can see that the carrier sheet is just covering that green part. And I don't want my exposed iron on to come into contact with my heat source. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab this once more and place this over the top so it protects all of those other pieces that are not under the carrier sheet. Does that make sense? Okay, I wanna make sure everything is covered. If you accidentally had thrown this away, go just go grab it. Or if you don't have it anymore for some reason, put some parchment paper over the top. Just make sure you have a nice barrier, okay? So I'm gonna let that cool off and enjoy some peanut butter M&Ms in the meantime, and then we'll get to going on getting the second layer down. Okay, so this is pretty much close enough. I'll place that right on there and heat it up. So anyway, I called my husband while he was on his trip and I said, you will never guess what our son has decided to do. And it's so crazy because the crawling out of the crib and the potty training, I feel like both of those things are leading to obviously no diapers and a big boy bed, right? Or at least the rail off the bed. And so it's so funny because time is such a thief. It seems like in the course of 48 hours, he is going from a baby to a big boy. And I just feel like my mama heart has not been given any warning for that. So you can see why there's gonna be a lot of munching on treats in this video. So if any of you wanna grab some chocolate, maybe even a glass of wine while you watch this, don't make me have chocolate by myself, but it's, uh, it's fun, right? That first layer's off and now, the second layer came off beautifully, no issues. Oh, perfect, so there you go. Now I do have some videos on doing layered iron-on, so if you wanted to learn more about this in a slow manner, then go ahead and check out those videos. I'll do my best to link them down below, but I also have a playlist just on iron-on or HTV. Those terms are actually used interchangeably, just kind of depends on the company and what they want to call it, but it's either iron-on or HTV, which is heat transfer vinyl, I have lots of videos on this. So go ahead and check those out if you need me to slow down a little bit for you. But in these videos, we just kind of go quick so we can do all sorts of crafts and get lots of inspiration, but I do have lots of videos where I slow down. Okay, so there is our first little craft. I think that turned out super cute. I think this would also look really adorable on a gray sweatshirt. Wouldn't that be really fun? I feel like those colors would contrast and pop really well on that color as well. Okay, let's move on to the next fun craft idea for Valentine's Day. So when I was recently at Target, I actually found so many neat things and you did see a lot of those fun inspiration blanks that I found at Target in the last video. So again, check that out if you missed it. But I also found this at the Target dollar spot and I instantly grabbed it. I thought this was so cute. It's like, well, for me, I feel like it's gonna be a little charcuterie board, but this could be a little, you know, dip board if you wanted to do some veggies and then have a little dip here. Let me see if it does have a warning about being, it doesn't have any, well, hold on. Um, it says food safe and dishwasher safe. Okay, and it says board, food safe and spot clean only. Oh wait, so they're both, yes. Okay, sorry, dish is food safe and dishwasher safe. I see how they're doing that there. And then the serving board is food safe, but it wants you to spot clean that and not put that in the dishwasher. Okay, hopefully that helps. But some of those things you really need to pay attention to, especially if you wanna serve a food on there. Now, knowing that vinyl is not technically food safe, so you just wanna be really creative with how you put it on there so that your food isn't really coming into contact with it. Or if you still love this idea and you want to decorate the whole thing, maybe you just put some napkins down on top of it or something like that. It's your call. But what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna get creative and put something right down here 
But I thought this would be a fun little charcuterie board and I'm gonna go ahead and use that as my inspiration. So isn't this cute? I just love that dish. So I'll link the font information that I use down below. Also since moving, I found myself purging a lot of craft supplies. I feel like someone asked me that if I purged before or after I moved and it made no sense, but I decided to purge after. I don't know if I was just so stressed about the move that I couldn't um, focus on purging while I was packing. So I just packed everything and then knew when I got to my new space that as I was moving in, I could like really narrow down the things that I'm really using or the things that um, I ne didn't don't necessarily pull for. So you'll see that in my craft room tour. I'm also actually getting ready to do a video about the 20 best things that I have purchased and the 20 worst things. And I not worse, but more of regrets. So I'm gonna be kind of breaking down my thought process on purchasing crafting things and share with you some of the things that I will buy time and time again, but also, okay, this is a stinker, but also I will share some things that I don't necessarily um, love and therefore kind of regret purchasing. So I'm excited about that video and that's probably why I ended up coming with a lot of my stuff because as I was packing, I was like, oh, that would be a, a nice little video to do and and nothing um, makes you focus on what you have than when you are either reorganizing or packing it up. So that's all going to be on its way. Okay, so I say all that to say, I am trying to use up all of my smart vinyl because it is something that I regret purchasing. I don't love it. I love it for certain things and that would be if you are using tiny, tiny, tiny text because it's so thick that it weeds really nice and it's a little bit more durable. Um, so there are some ways that it is a little bit more advantageous, but for the most part, I'm not really a fan of it. So I am trying to use it all up, which is why I am pulling for it right now. There are some things where I am not making room for it in my craft room because I don't love it. So I'm, I have a, like a bunch of things that I just wanna kind of use up. And so I'm not making room in drawers for it. I'm just putting it on top of my counter and saying, use this, use it up. Okay, so I thought this was cute. Again, I'm going to be using this more as a charcuterie board. And so I put be mine plus wine on here. I thought that'd be cute. Okay, I'm gonna lay that down and burnish. There we go. Oh, I lost an eye. And you know what? It must have come off when weeding because it's not on there. So what I will do, oh, you know what I could do? I could take the little period and put it over there. So that's what I'll do. Okay, let's go ahead and get this really placed down. Okay. Nudge it into place. And again, I was just creative with how I wanted to put my design on here. So I put it off to the side where I knew it would be less likely that there would be food, right? Food would more likely be in the middle. So that way I'm avoiding it coming into contact with the food. Okay, there we go. And then again, to remedy my little weaving whoopsie, which we have all done, especially with the dots of the eyes and the punctuations, I am going to do that. And there we go. Isn't that cute? I love how that turned out. I think that's super sweet. Love that idea. Thank you Target for being so creative this year for Valentine's Day. I think that's really fun. Okay, there's another fun idea. Run to Target, see if they have them. This was in their dollar section. It was either three or five dollars, but I don't quite remember. All right, let's keep crafting. Okay, so as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I am working on some little Valentine's Day baskets for my kiddos for Valentine's Day. It's something that I've always just done for them and I have several video, do I have several? One or two probably on doing Valentine's Day baskets. So you can check those out. And then I usually post the final product over on Instagram. It's just fun. It's more like, it's kind of like an Easter basket type of setup, but I can't help but do it for Valentine's Day as well. So I am finding things to put in their little baskets. 
My kids are obsessed with notebooks. Quite honestly, they get that from their mama because I cannot pass up a notebook to save my life. But I found these at TJ Maxx actually, and they have this little chenille heart, which is so fun. Now, if you can't find these exact ones, I know that Hobby Lobby has chenille patches and adhesive patches. In fact, we went ahead and did a notebook for myself in the first Valentine's Day video where I put a patch on the notebook, so check that out. So you can recreate this too. I know finding things from places like TJ Maxx and Home Goods and all of the other places like that, it can be a little bit hard to find those. So don't worry, you can totally recreate it. Now I'm gonna put some iron on onto the front. So I'm going to put this on medium heat. This is just a little mini easy press. It's going to be the perfect choice for doing the heat transfer vinyl on the notebook. And I went ahead and grabbed a glitter iron-on and again, grabbed it from my little stash that I'm trying to use. Another stash that I'm trying to use is all of the like Cricut Joy sized items because I don't usually buy it in that size. Um, so anyway, I'm just trying to use all that up because if I use it all up, then I don't have to make room in my drawers for it. So I'm only making room for the things that I have been, you know, that are more of my go-to, my go-to things. If you want a craft room tour of how I use a, the drawer system to organize all my product, then be sure to check out my last craft room tour. My new craft room is going to be heavily based on that, but I have done a few tweaks just because naturally when you work in a space, you learn ways that can be a little bit more efficient or ways that you work better. So I'm going to be changing just a few things, but also a goal of mine for probably the past couple of years has been paring down my craft supplies, whether that means just using them up or not purchasing them at the same rate that I was. I was always just wanting to make sure that I was replenishing. I had one of every color in case a craft came up. You know, I was always replenishing and making sure that I had options when crafting. But now I just feel I'm in a mindset of using what I have and simplifying my space. Okay, so once more, font information will be linked below. And I typed out I love you obviously two times because I'm going to do two notebooks just like that. And I'm going to tuck this very, very closely to the heart. So I'm going to trim off that top really tightly to the top of the letters so that I can place that as close as I can. Okay, I don't want any of that carrier to nudge the design down. All right, I'm also going to, let's simplify this little workspace for just a moment. I'm going to, I purposefully kept one of my carrier sheets. I guess I kept both of them. And I'm going to use this to be a barrier on my notebook. This seems like more of a faux leather, which is perfect. You can absolutely iron on faux leather. I have so many crafts doing so, but I'm preheating that area and then I'm going to add my iron on. Okay, I'm going to use this as a barrier and again, more for the notebook than the iron on because the iron on has its own little sheet that's protecting it, but I want to make sure I'm protecting the notebook from the heat. And this is intended to move around. So I'm just rotating and moving it around. It doesn't take much. That's probably plenty. And then I'm simply going to set this to the side and let that cool. And then I will peel up the liner so that the iron on stays right on the notebook. Okay, so I'm gonna do this as well. Same process. I think personalizing notebooks possibly could be one of my favorite things to do. I think it comes hand in hand with absolutely loving notebooks. I just take notes everywhere, whether it's inspiration, ideas, at church, during Bible studies, during, I don't know, trying to figure out what I want to do for crafting, trying to make plans. I just love note taking. Okay, there we go. And I feel like that is probably good. So let me grab, oh wait, it's not, hold on. Let's do this side and see. I might have just not waited long enough. 
Oh yeah, okay, it's just I didn't wait long enough on that one side and maybe I didn't put my heat quite high enough. So let me just put that U into place. Looks like that really needed a little bit of help. And sometimes it's so, well, definitely right now, but it's really beneficial to have the mini because now I can just do a little heat right in that area instead of doing the whole thing again. Let's see how this one did. Ooh, this one definitely needs more heat. I like to check both sides just to see. Oh yeah, interesting. That is so interesting because it's really just on the L there. So I'm actually going to take the liner off and just put this liner on. That way I can just tack that down really quickly. Okay. Perfect. And let's check this little one. Okay. How cute. Again, I will put the font information down below. I love how those turned out and I went with a glitter and I think that that looks super, super sweet. Super cute. Okay, again, these will be going in their little Valentine's Day baskets, which I will reveal more at the end of the video because we have a couple other things to put in there and craft. So let's go ahead and continue on so that I can put these little baskets together. They're gonna turn out super cute. I'm really, really excited with all of the little elements that are going to surprise the kids. Okay, another thing that's gonna go into the baskets are these heart glasses. I got these for my girls' baskets. These are also from the Target dollar spot. They were a dollar a piece. So I went ahead and picked these up. I thought they were adorable. And I love that they come with this little background to actually personalize it for a Valentine. But I'm going to put a little vinyl on the little lens. I thought that would be adorable. Now, when I was there, they had just red. And then I went back today actually, so probably about two weeks later since purchasing. So interesting, I feel like my Target isn't necessarily selling out of things. Well, the new Target that I'm that I'm shopping at now, um, but they are always adding to it. So for example, today I went back and they had different colors. So it was really kind of neat that, um, and encouraging that once things kind of sell out that they're replenishing them or adding on to them. So that kind of gives me a little grace for time when shopping. So I went ahead and did an XOXO. Let me grab some transfer tape. Again, I'm using the Smart Vinyl to do these. So I can use that up. Okay. And let's burnish that down really well. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull these up together just because I always struggle with the Smart Vinyl. It's just, again, it's so thick, which again makes it advantageous for certain things, but for general crafting, I think its thickness can be just tricky. Just tricky. Okay, there we go. Oh, that did so well. Perfect. Now, I'll trim those apart. And we'll just set one to the side right here for a second. Okay, you could add a little bit of rubbing alcohol if you wanted just to clean the surface. I don't think it's necessary for this particular craft, so I'm just going to skip it. And I'm just putting it right on the little right edge. I think that's super cute. Peel that off. And how adorable is that? I think that's so cute. Okay, I'll go ahead and do this the same way. And we have another sweet little element to go in their little Valentine's Day baskets. How cute is that? So head to your Target, see what they have. I think these are so fun. My kids still are in the dress up stage, so I love that these are fun little gifts for them, but also that they last for a while and they can do fun little make-believe play with them. So super cute idea. I'm gonna put these in the basket and show you a little bit later how the baskets are coming together. Oh my goodness, we haven't used the mug press in so long. So I wanted to do a fun little craft using the mug press. I went ahead and turned it on so we can go ahead and start preheating it. Don't ask me what is on here. I need to get that cleaned off. I'll go ahead and do that after the video, but it's been bothering me. Okay, so I am going to be doing a really fun mug. They have these really nice pink mugs. They are more two-tone, so there's like a lighter pink, more kind of rose pink, and then I would say more of a coral handle. So at first I was like, oh gosh, that doesn't match, but it's actually super cute. Um, and then I'm also going to do a really neat infusible ink on this, and I grabbed this 
I think this is the pink lemonade set. I'll link it down below for you, but I thought that would be super cute with the pink inside and then that coral handle. So I did a cute little design just using the template that is in Design Space and also a font that I have, and I'll link the font down below. It's super, super sweet and cute. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and weed my design. Now, one thing that you're going to want to note about infusible ink is you want to make sure that your hands are very dry and they don't have any oils on them, such as lotions or anything like that, because you'll disturb the ink when you are um, weeding it out. And unlike how we traditionally weed out items, we are going to just use our hands. You want to avoid a weeding tool because you can actually scratch the ink and once it's scratched, it's removed from the surface and you'll see it on your final project. So just avoid doing that. Or if you do like using the weeder, just be really mindful of that. You just don't wanna scratch that ink off. Okay, so I just simply did XOXO vertically. So it's going to go down the side of the mug by the handle, and I thought that was super cute. And I used the template that has, and you can keep these. You can keep the little pieces that you weed out and you can put that on something else. Just keep these in a little dry place so that they stay really, really nice. Okay, so I did the design like this, just on one side, you could replicate it on the other side as well. And theoretically, the Cricut is supposed to cut out around this border, but I feel like I often don't have that work out. Well, it, I mean, it's working out right, but it's kind of taking a little bit more of a tug. Okay, and I did use the little scallop design for the mug template, so you can just see the scallops on the edges there. I have really, really fun tutorials on how to use this product and use the mug press that go through how to create the template and how to edit the templates. So I'll place those videos down below in case you become super interested in this. Sometimes I just grab scissors and just go along the little template here. Um, but I do have videos on doing this and also doing it with multiple colors. So go ahead and check those out if you need me to slow down or if you wanna learn a little bit more about this because it's really fascinating. I don't do it as often as I should. I kind of forget about it, but it's super fun. Okay, so again, removing anything in the design that I don't want in my final project. So my final design is going to look like that. How cute. Now I need to prep the surface area of the mug and usually, and you've seen this in my videos, I like to do a lint-free cloth because I feel like the lint-free cloth not only removes the lint, but it also takes off any smudges from your fingers or from any oils. My lint-free cloth is MIA right now. Again, I'm still moving in, so I feel like I've seen it, but I have no idea where it is. So I'm going to do the other option, which is just taking a lint roller and running it over the surface. And I know this seems super silly. You're like, what are you doing? This seems so bizarre. But you wanna make sure there's no lint on the surface because if it is present, it will come in the form of a blue dot once the heat is applied. And we might get a blue dot, usually I do. It's just the way it is. But we just try our best, right? Okay, another thing I want to mention is make sure that you're choosing the template that matches the size mug that you have. So you wanna make sure that you're mindful of that. Okay, this is all ready to go. So now all we need to do is put our template around our mug here. And I'm gonna do it obviously this way. So what I want to do is I want to, for me, I find it best to put the mug handle facing me and to get it lined up, then I wrap and bring it towards me. And then I can, well, let me tilt this a little bit, but what I'm looking at is I'm making sure that the distance from this scalloped edge and the handle matches the difference between this scalloped edge and the handle. So I'm gonna do it like this because it keeps it straight. And I think that is just about even. And so once it's even, I can, I think that looks good. Okay, I can let that sticky down. And I just grab one side and lay it down. Then I pull the other side and wrap that around. That way I can get it nice and tight on there. Okay. 
just like that. Now you can add some heat tape if you'd like. And why not? I'll just demonstrate that. Here's the heat tape that I like to use. And I put it in a dispenser because if not, it's really hard to get off that roll if it's not just already pre-started at all times. And I'll place that there. Okay, I think, cut that down a little bit. Okay, cut that down a little bit. And now the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a sheet of butcher paper and I'm going to apply that to the top or over the top of the infusible ink sheet so that I have an extra protection. Okay, and I'll link the butcher paper that I like to use down below. It's my tried and true, I really like it, but I'm just going to grab one sheet and I'm going to cover just like so. And this protects my heat press. So if any of that infusible ink was trying to seep out, then it would get on the paper and not on the inside of my press. Because if you're inside of your press or any press that you are doing sublimation or infusible ink with, if it gets that ink on there, the next time you go to use it, it could transfer the ink onto your next project. So you just wanna be really mindful and careful. So I, I like to just add one more layer of protection there. And then I don't mind that it is larger up there because that's where the ink could kind of seep out a little bit. So I just allow that to be taller than it, than it needs to be. Okay, so now I'll bring in my mug press and place that mug right inside and simply close the lever. Now it's going to start doing a little countdown. You want to be mindful that you open up a window and have a really well ventilated space when doing this. It does have a scent and odor that is part of the process of the sublimation. So you just wanna be aware of that, especially if you are a little bit more sensitive to any types of odors and fumes and things like that. So just be mindful of that open a window. Again, good ventilation will be key here. But now if you can note right here, there are five lights and they will just continuously turn on as the process goes and then it will give a final chime once it's done. So I'll go ahead and let that quote unquote bake on and then we'll go ahead and remove it from the mug press once it's ready. Okay, so it went ahead and chimed. So what I'm going to do is open this little lever up and you just wanna be careful and make sure that the handle is cool enough to touch. And I'm just going to bring that out. And then I'm gonna set this on a heat mat, that way it can cool, okay? So you wanna just make sure you give it a lot of time to cool and then we're going to peel off all of these layers and see our fun design. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and begin removing all of the little layers here. And now I can go ahead and I just use some tweezers to kind of help nudge that tape up. It really helps. Okay. And oh my goodness, how cute. Oh my gosh. I love this um, actual, I can't remember. I'll, again, I'll, I'll link the actual name. I think it's the pink lemonade. But I love it because it just has so many colors in it. Isn't that cute? And I really like the vertical XOXO. I think that's so fun. Now you can decide if you wanted to do it on both. You could absolutely do that. Oh, look at those colors. Isn't that just so fun? But I went ahead and just did it on one side and then you can just decide based on the person you're giving it to, if they're right-handed or left-handed, where you want that design. But I thought that was a really fun design. I also like that there wasn't a lot of design on here because I really wanted to showcase that gorgeous, gorgeous pattern. It's just way too fun. So again, I will link this product down below. That way you can add to your collection if you think this is just swoon worthy like I do. But that's so cute. Again, the process is so easy. I love how that turned out. And I don't know that we got a blue dot. Even if we did, I don't know that we would notice it with all of this that's going on. So, all right, let's go ahead and move on to our final craft and I'm gonna show you those cute baskets. Okay, the last thing that I'm going to do is make a really fun sign and I thought this would be a cute little family sign that I'm going to do. So this is from Target, isn't this so sweet? I really like this and it's of trivet 
I found it and I just loved the look of it and I thought this would be a fun little addition to a craft. And I'm actually going to use this side because the other side, hopefully this tag comes off nicely. There's nothing worse than a tag that wants to stay around forever. Um, but the other side has a little red mark. Oh, oh goodness. It's not gonna be worth the pain. Maybe I could get a magic eraser. I probably can get a little magic eraser and remove this little scuff that was on there because it looks like probably something else that was in my cart rubbed against it and put a little red mark. So I will do that later because I'm sure I can get that off and it will be far less tricky than trying to do the, the other side with those darn stickers. Okay, I'm going to attach this first. Now this is just a little base from Michaels. You can do whatever you'd like with it, but I really like that plain wood look. I just, it fits with my decor. So I thought I would leave it just so, but know that you could stain it or paint it or do whatever fits your own style. And once again, use the adhesive of your choice, but I'm going to opt for hot glue and I'm going to quickly move this all around and glue this right to my sign here. And you know if you're working with hot glue, you have to move, move, move. Okay, so let's get that straight. It looks great. Perfect, press that down. Okay, and now I have a really fun little established date. I thought this would be really cute. This would be a fun, so I like it because it's kind of a cute Valentine's Day decor, but it would also be super fun for doing a wedding gift or something like that but this is the year that my husband and I were married. So this is just a fun little piece of decor, but also takes a little twist of meaningfulness. Okay, and then I'll just place this transfer tape right over. You don't see me using Cricut transfer tape often because it's not my favorite, but if you remember my last video, I was trying to try out a new transfer tape just to see, and it failed miserably. And so actually just today, I got my new transfer tape in the mail. It came in really fast, really, really fast. So I am back to my favorite tape, but in the meantime, this is a great opportunity to use up some of those supplies that are lingering and get them out of here. I will say though, between the, the tape that I was trying out and the Cricut tape, even though it's not my, the Cricut tape is not my favorite, it's better than that other one. I'm not sure why why that one didn't like me as much, but we sure didn't get along. Okay, so then I'm just going to put this, let me show you the whole thing. That way you can get an idea for spacing, but I think that looks great. Okay, and again, paint it if you'd like, it would be gorgeous. I just really like this look. Okay, now, Remove and there is our really, really simple but really fun little piece of decor. Okay, so here are the baskets that I put together for the kiddos for Valentine's Day. The girls' are basically identical except for the little pencil pouches that I put in there. They are those little Squishmallow pouches. My kids are down the rabbit hole with Squishmallows, so they love them and I had to feed on that current little obsession because those were super cute. But I'll go ahead and just go through the one of the girls' because just know that they are identical. So we have these little Squishmallow pouches. One's getting a little owl. And these are from Hobby Lobby, these pouches. And then of course my little hamster lover she is going to go ahead and get the hamster. Okay, and so for the girl basket, I found some really cool things. But at Michael's, I found this little bead kit, which is so fun. You can make a little bracelet, super cute. I loved the colors. And then of course, we're still in that very fun poppet stage. So each kiddo is going to get a little poppet. Today with me, you helped craft one of the items, which is this really cute little pair of heart sunglasses. We have a little heart cookie that we're going to decorate course some fun jewelry our little pencil pouch and then together again we did these cute little notebooks we also have chapstick because who cannot love chapstick where did I get these I think this is from Target I think so and then my other little one she is going to get this color and they both have some really cute little flavors in there so that'll be fun each of them are going to get a cute little sweatshirt these are from Target as well and I'll do my best to link everything that you see in here and finally I found these and fell in love with these these are really cute little journals so I'm giving this to each of my girls it's a mother-daughter journal I'll link it down below I love it it's so cute and I thought it was just going to be a wonderful little addition to the basket but also a really 
really heartfelt and fun gift that's going to keep on giving for both of us. So that was the girl version of our baskets. And then my little guy, he's, again, he's two, right? But he's getting to be a big boy each and every day, especially these days. So he has a little bit more of a simplified basket. So he's getting his own set of markers more because his sisters are tired of him stealing theirs. So he's getting one set all of his own. He also is going to get this little pantsuit. It's so cute. It's a little Mickey Mouse pantsuit. I'll link it down below and it has little jogger pants that go along with it. I got him this little bubble blaster. I can't remember where I found this. Was this at Target? Let me see. Yeah, it was at Target. It must have been in their um, $5 section or you know that 135 section. And then he loves, again, coloring. So there's this little cute notebook of little tiny pages so that he can color. Everybody's getting a pop it. And then of course we have a little yummy chocolate, which I'm sure he's going to devour in a second. So that is the idea for this year's cute little baskets. And again, I'll post them over on Instagram as well, but be sure to check down below. I'll put the links to all of the things if I can find them or at least similar items down below, but I'm really loving how those came together. And I think it's gonna be a really fun, special little Valentine's Day for the kids. Oh my goodness, so many fun things in this video. I'm loving this mug. Again, I think the colors are just amazing, so fun, and I hope that showing that process helped you become more confident with infusible ink. But again, I have videos that go way more in depth from designing it to actually doing each step. So check that out if you need a little bit more of a step-by-step -step guide. I also really love how this shirt turned out. It's always so fun to do a shirt with multiple colors. It looks so fun, and I think that the little saying is just adorable. This little charcuterie board is so fun. I was so excited to find that at Target and I think adding the little personalization just made it that much more cute. And then of course we did a couple things for these baskets, the glasses, and then we ironed on to the little notebooks just to give them a cute little personalization and I thought those, both of those turned out super cute. So I hope that this was really fun for you to watch. Thank you so much for watching. Again, check out last week's video if you want more Valentine's Day inspiration. And again, I do have one more video coming up next week with some additional Valentine's Day crafts and those are cutie patootie. So check that out next week. If you made it to the end, be sure to give a little heart emoji down in the comment section below and be sure to let me know which one was your favorite. All right, have a good week and we'll see you next time.